Images are one of the three assets type that will heavily impact your page load time if not properly optimized. Now, today's video is a refresh of one of my old videos about optimizing images. We'll not only cover how to reduce the size of your images, but also how to convert them into modern formats like WebP and ultimately what's the best way to export your assets from Figma or any UX UI tools that you're using right now. But before I'm going to share my screen with you, let's discuss how unoptimized images reduce your page load time. You already know me, I really love to talk the details so you guys understand the fundamentals and you can better optimize your web assets to hit 90 plus performance scores in Google Lighthouse. So every single time you load a website, what's gonna happen is the browser needs to connect to the hosting and access all different assets. This can be images, fonts, scripts, and so on. In web, we usually call these requests. If your web page has a lot of these requests to load, of course, this will impact your page load time. Now, when it comes to the impact of images on the Google Web Vitals algorithm, which by the way, Google launched in 2023, there are two main metrics that your images will impact. The very first one, of course, is LCP or largest control pane. And the second one is CLC, which stands for cumulative layout shift. Your LCP, your largest control pane, is basically every big element that the browser needs to load in the very first section. And usually it's your hero or header section. So if you have a really big image in your hero section, of course, that will impact the initial page load. But more than that, it will impact this LCP metric. So imagine this, your page loads your image that lives in the hero section it's actually on the dark theme it has dark colors the font that is on the top of your hero image it's white now if someone loads a page and their internet speed is not that fast they will basically see a white section with the white text unless you change the background color to black but that of course creates a problem with the user experience because instead of quickly reading the information and accessing the answers that Google provided so much to that user, what's gonna happen is the user will have to wait. Now, when it comes to the second metric, which is your cumulative layout shift, this is basically every single time when your image pushes the content below it all the way to the bottom. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a blog post. Every single blog post usually have a featured image that lives at the top of the page. Now, initially, that image won't be loaded, which means that the space that image takes won't be visible either. This will cause the article body to actually be at the top. But when your featured image loads, it will push the article body to the bottom, creating this layout shifts. And obviously this is not good because the user experience suffer, that accessibility suffer, and of course the readability. Imagine you open up one of the blog posts, you wanna quickly read and find the answer, but then you have that annoying feature of the image that pops in and pushes the entire article all the way to the bottom. That's a big no-no to Google. Now, of course, that your images also impact other metrics like your speed index, total blocking time, and the rest. So let's start with the step number one, which is the most important of them all. Get your images ready for export. Now, I'm inside my Figma file and we're gonna discuss two main image types. The very first one is the one that you see on the top and that is for full screen images, so this one right here. And then we have the bottom example, which I call contained image. These are basically images that you do place in a container on the website. So let's start with the top one, which is the full screen images. <laughs> now I'm not a huge fan of these kind of images. They look cool, they look fabulous, but they heavily impact your page initial load time. And that is because instead of the browser to load the rest of the page, it actually needs to load this big image right here. So obviously everything starts in Figma. We're gonna convert this section into a frame because every single time you do export an image from Figma, it needs to live inside a frame. The frame allows you to quickly crop the image, but the second reason is because this is easier for developers. They would usually select the frame and export the frame because in Webflow, that frame will become a div block. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this hero section and we're gonna duplicate it because we only need the image. I'm using an auto layout. So what I'm gonna do right here on the left, I'm gonna click on this minus next to auto layout, which will remove the auto layout from this section. Now, the very next thing that I'm gonna do is I will remove this container I have inside. So now I only have just the image. And my image, as you can see from the navigator, 
on the left side leaves inside the frame. So the very next step that I'm doing is I'm renaming this frame and you have to think of SEO too. So the naming that you're gonna put right here needs to be descriptive, but it also needs to have some main keywords because chances are this image will get pulled by Google. So you wanna get that additional traffic, but at the same time, you wanna hit a really good score when it comes to your accessibility. So I went with an image with the guy looking at the laptop. <laughs> Quite descriptive, don't you find? I just found a way easier to rename images here. So I also fix any SEO issues related to my images. Now the very next thing that we're gonna do is to export this image. So under the export, on the right side, I'm gonna hit on plus to create a new export property. And then the very first thing I wanna change here is from this size drop-down menu, we're gonna choose 2X. A lot of modern screens nowadays, they use retina displays, which is basically duplicating the amount of pixels you have on the screen. And now if you do export an image in 1X for a retina screen, that image will look blurred and pixelated. Now the very next one is to choose the format. So we're gonna go with JPEG, unless it have transparency. If it does have transparency, you're gonna go with PNG images. JPEG selected, so we're gonna hit X I already have the folder here and I'm gonna click save. But yeah, make sure you do organize your project in folders and subfolders so it's easier to find assets later on. Now the next tool that we're gonna use is called Squish. It's a free tool from Google developed by Chrome Labs which will help us to convert our images, whether it's JPEG or PNG, to a way modern format like AVIF or WebP. I'm gonna have the link of this tool in the video description so you can quickly bookmark it. So here's the image drag and drop it here and boom, we have it already optimized. So from this toolbar that you see in the bottom right corner under the compress, we're gonna click on this drop down, And from this list, we're gonna choose web. Every single image is basically a binary code. It's built out of pixels and pixels do have information. When you do compress the images, you're basically reducing the information each pixel has. And that is how you do compress the file size. So final, of course, is we can increase a little bit the quality. You can see that the file size is only 61 KB. We got a 97% reduction. And I do believe that I can increase this quality by let's say 80. The rule of thumb here is try to avoid images that are larger than 100 KB. Now, final, of course, is to click on this blue button and download our image. I'm gonna click Save As, and I'm gonna save in the same folder to keep my project organized. Now, let's do the same for the second image that we have right here. This image also needs to live inside a frame because as you can see inside my Figma, it is not inside a frame. It says fit image, but this image itself doesn't live inside a frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on F key. We're just simply going to the Figma toolbar. You click on the frame right here, and then we're gonna drag and drop a frame. Now, we're gonna take this image from here we're gonna click Command C to copy and we're gonna paste it inside this frame. Now finally is we need to resize this frame so it fit this specific image that's inside. So what we're gonna do here with the frame selected, we're gonna go to the top right corner where it says resize to fit and we're gonna click it. And now the frame is resized to fit the content inside or in this case to fit the image. Now, of course, we also need to select the image and remove any border radius or any effects that you have, for example, drop shadows, borders, or anything in between. And final, of course, is we're gonna give this a name. I went with customer photo because chances are we're gonna use this image with a review section. Finally, we're gonna hit export, save the image in the same folder, go back to our Squish and simply drag and drop the image right here. Now, Squish will automatically save your settings. So every single time you drop a new image, it will convert it to WebP with all the settings that you had previously. I'm okay with the quality. I'm also okay with the size reduction. All I have to do now, just click on this download button, save as, and basically save in the same project folder. And that's it. This is where the Figma job ends. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this WebP images and we're gonna upload them to Webflow. So the very first step inside of Webflow is to click on the assets icon. This will open up the assets panel inside of Webflow. And I also love to click on this expand assets panel in the top right corner. This just gives me more real estate because right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our very first folder. Usually, I'm trying to create the same folders in Webflow that I do have on my computer. So we're gonna click on this new folder and we're gonna name this folder stock. We're gonna hit create. 
Now, we're gonna select this folder because this is where we want to upload our WebP images. And final, of course, is to take our WebP images, this one and this one, and drag and drop them over the Webflow Assets panel. Now, before we're gonna replace the DOM images that Webflow provided, we have to do one more setting change here, and that is the alternative text. Now, if you do SEO alternative text, it's something really, really important for your SEO efforts. It basically tells not only Google bots, but also screen readers what's inside that image. So all we have to do is hover over our image, click on open asset settings, and then under the descriptive, you're going to see this field. So this is where we need to come up with the descriptive name for this image. So I went with a photo of our customer. You can go with something even more descriptive here and also add a couple of keywords depending on the business or depending on your SEO strategy. Now we're going to X this out and we're going to do the same for the second image. And now we have both of our assets fully ready. Now we still have to do one final touch with this hero image and that is changing a few settings. So with the hero image selected, we're gonna go to the settings and inside this panel, the very first thing we're gonna change is the width and height. Now keep in mind, this width and height, it's not the CSS width and height. It's not the style width and height. Instead, is the image HTML tag width and height. Now, why this is important? If you do remember in the beginning of this video, we talked about cumulative layout shifts. Now, if you don't set any width and height for this image, what's going to happen is your browser will not dedicate this specific amount of pixels for that image container, which will result later on in your web page layout being shifted. So all we have to do here is we go back to the Figma, we select our hero image, and then we're looking at our width and height in Figma. We know it's 1440 by 800 pixels. So with this information, we're gonna go back to the Webflow, and where it says width, we're gonna set it to 1440, just like we have in Figma. And for the height, we're gonna set it to 800 pixels. What this will do is it will allocate the specific width and height for the image container to leave once your browser fully loaded the image. Finally is where it says alternative text. We wanna make sure it says use alt text from assets, the one that we've set up when uploaded the image. And where it says load, we're gonna set this to agar. It's important that this image loads with the rest of critical resource. Now finally, let's do the same for our contained image that we have right here. Now this image will leave below our fold, so it's okay to leave the loading as lazy. Finally, let's click on choose image and select our customer photo from here. Now there's one more thing I love to do with this image. Um, if I'm gonna resize my browser, what you're gonna see is the image gets skewed and that is because the browser doesn't know what to do with its height. Should it maintain the aspect ratio? Should it resize? How exactly you want the browser to handle the resizing of this image. And all we have to do is with our image selected, we're gonna go to the style panel, then under the size options, we're gonna click on the height field and we're gonna type auto. So now if I will resize my viewport, you can see that the image gets resized without losing its aspect ratio or being skewed. And of course, let's talk about best practices on the web when handling images. Try to avoid images that do take the entire screen. This will heavily impact your side speed and most importantly, your largest conful paint. Second one is try to use fewer images. The less images you use, the better, because your browser won't have to load a lot of additional image resources from the Webflow hosting. Third one, try to export the images in frames and always in 2x resolution because we have modern screens with red and displays. Fifth one, try to use descriptive text both for the alt text that you put inside Webflow and for your image file name. And the very last one is to compress and convert images in modern formats like WebP and Avid. So being said, I hope in today's video you learned something new. If you're gonna have any questions, make sure you use the comment section below. And if you wanna stay in touch with fresh uploads on this channel, just subscribe.